Now that the New Orleans Saints have put out their official announcement that Clint Kubiak is the new offensive coordinator, the rest of the offensive staff looks to be building out with a lot of positive potential. We got all that and a little bit of land yap for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? I am your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, and you are New Orleans Saints expert, credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode, we're going to be giving it a little bit of an usher treatment. Who's got it bad with Clint Kubiak on the way? We talked about the guys that are going to get the biggest boost. Who potentially loses a little bit of ground in this new system? We're also going to be taking a look at the new wide receiver coach option for the New Orleans Saints. Keith Williams interviewed, and he's got some very interesting ties to this New Orleans Saints team. And before we get to all of that, we're also going to take a look at the way that the Saints offensive coaching staff is filling out with now offensive line, running back, and QB coaches expected to be hired, along with a new addition as well. So appreciate you very much as always for making us your first listen of the day every day. And of course, for being an everydayer here on the Locked On Saints podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and enter the promo code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. So the New Orleans Saints finally made the announcement, the official announcement from the team that Clint Kubiak is and will be the offensive coordinator for the New Orleans Saints beginning here in the offseason of 2024. But along with that, we also got a slew of news about the way that the offensive coaching staff is filling out. And the big takeaway is there's some promising potential here in terms of the way that this offensive coaching staff is being built out. They're bringing a lot of familiarity with one another in, but not so much much familiarity when it comes to what the Saints have done before. This is an entirely new direction for the New Orleans Saints offense, and that's what it needed to be. These hires look to be headed in that direction. So let's take a look at some of the folks that you should expect to see uh, or hear the names of as we continue to move forward. A couple of guys we've already talked about, offensive line coach John Benton. He's the guy that's overlapped with Kyle Shanahan in Houston, as well as in San Francisco. He overlapped with Clint Kubiak's dad, Gary Kubiak in Houston as well, spent time with Clint Kubiak also while in uh, you know, a couple of different places where they went, including you know Minnesota and all that. So there's just a, a ton of connections here all over the place when it comes to John Benton. And the thing that you like about John Benton, and I've mentioned this on the show before, but just as a recap, when he has arrived in places that have given up a lot of sacks on the offensive line or has not gotten a run game going, the longer that he's been there, the better the protection gets, the better the run game has gotten. That's a consistent trajectory you can see throughout his time in Houston, in San Francisco. Even the year that he was with the New York Jets, the offensive line in terms of protection was still a big issue. How much of that was Zach Wilson and all the other quarterbacks that had to play that year, though, as part of that conversation? But when Brees Hall was healthy and they had their run game healthy, they were producing on that run game as well. John Benton did take 2023 away from the NFL, much like Chris Richard did a few years ago and now is set to return to the NFL here in New Orleans, working with a guy like Clint Kubiak, who is going to bring that blend of the his dad system, the Gary Kubiak system, and that Kyle Shanahan system, both of which John Benton has a vast amount of experience working within. So a good partnership there. Uh, similarly, look at the quarterback spot. Andrew Janako expected to become the Saints quarterback coach. He spent 2021 with Clint Kubiak in uh, Minnesota working with uh, Kirk Cousins, and they worked at the exact same capacity. Andrew Janako was the quarterback coach. Clint Kubiak was the offensive coordinator. Kirk Cousins, of course, was the quarterback. He threw for 4,221 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions in that season, but they were let go when they did the whole regime change away from Mike Zimmer, brought in Kevin O'Connell, brought in their own wide zone sort of concepts and things like that. and that's what led to their departure. That's what sent, you know, Janako around to the places that he's made stops at since. That's what sent Clint Kubiak to Denver for a couple of years and then eventually San Francisco last year. And finally, the newest 
addition that we're expecting, or not the newest, the second newest, but the newest position coach um, addition that we're expecting is Derek Foster, the running back coach for the Los Angeles Chargers, I almost said quarterback coach, running back coach for Los Angeles Chargers over the course of the past few years. So he's worked uh, the last three years with the Chargers, has worked closely with Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly, and other running backs over there. And I think that when you look at this one and you look at the numbers that Austin Eckler has put up, then you're probably not very inspired by this hire. And, and I understand that. Uh, but here's, here's what I'll say. As a running back coach, you don't call the plays. You don't choose the usage of that running back on game day. You don't choose when that running back is on the field, off the field, what the personnel package is, what situations they're utilized in, how, what situations are utilized for. You just get them ready for what the system is. So if you pair a good running back coach with a play caller that's struggling, which is what we've seen in Los Angeles for the past couple of years, whether it be Joe Lombardi or even Kellen Moore, who struggled there quite a bit. And then, of course, all the bad decisions made by Brandon Staley and when to go for things, when to not go for things, leaning on the quarterback a little bit too much, going away from the run game early, all this other stuff. Then maybe the numbers don't look great. And I'll give you an example of this that you'll know intimately. Joel Thomas, the New Orleans Saints former running back coach who's now departed to be the running back coach over with the New York Giants. He became the Saints running back coach back in 2015, working in concert with folks and things like that, but eventually became the sole running back coach. During that time, he was working with Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray, all that, starting in 2017. And look at how good Alvin Kamara's production was early on with Sean Payton as the play caller, and look at how much it took steps back with Pete Carmichael as the play caller, right? So I'm giving you that example as to say, nobody turned a nose up at Joel Thomas and was saying, well, Joel Thomas is all of a sudden a bad running back coach. No, he went off and got a job at the same position with one of the NFL's best running backs over in New York with Saquon Barkley. And so when I look at sort of the lack of production from Austin Eckler and that run game over in Los Angeles, I don't put that solely on Derek Foster. I'm curious to see who he is with a new system and ideally with a better situation, better offense, better play caller from 2023 to 2024 for the New Orleans Saints. So I'm not saying that Derek Foster is going to be a fantastic hire, but I'm definitely not on the side of saying that he's a bad hire because of the lack of production from running backs when he's not the guy that makes that decision on game day. He's the one Monday through Saturday getting everybody ready. And then what happens in game day, he's trying to coach up from off the sideline in terms of helping that individual player or that individual position group, but he's not the one calling plays. He's not the one making bad decisions, which is what we've consistently seen from the Los Angeles Chargers since they were so stubborn as to stick with Brandon Staley for maybe a little bit too long over there. So I, I caution sort of a little bit of the public reaction to the Derek Foster hire or potential hire being based on last year's Austin Eckler numbers. Let's not do that. Can he coach the skill set of a dual threat running back? Yes. If the system is better in 2024, as we expect it to be in New Orleans, then you should see that transcend and you should see that come through. Finally, we got another one today on Thursday, uh, Rick Dennison. Now, this is a guy that we've tossed around quite a bit here on the show because, or whose name we tossed around, we're not tossing human beings around on the show, uh, but because of his overlap with Gary Kubiak in Houston and in Denver, also spent some time with Clint Kubiak in Minnesota as well in 2021. He's coming in. We believe it's run game coordinator, according to Jordan Schultz over at uh, Bleacher Report. Matt Paris, our good friend from over at NOLA.com, he mentioned that the title's still in the works. But it seems like, from what I'm being told, no matter what, his role is going to be in the run game. And the Saints need that. They didn't have a run game coordinator last year. After they moved on from Dan Roshar, they just didn't fill that role. I think you need that role. And hopefully a guy like Rick Dennison, who's put together very good rush offenses, who has developed offensive line talent, all of that, getting him around uh, will be a lot of fun. There's also a fun story about Rick Dennison that I'm going to tell you as we continue on with today's show. And we're also going to get to those wide receivers, that wide receiver coach uh, hire that we're talking about that's got some really, really interesting connections to this New Orleans Saints team. Let's get to all that as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get at you, and it's important to let that out, especially to somebody who's unbiased in your life. So today, I want to tell you about how I really feel about something, and you might be feeling the same way this week as well. Let's 
not forget the fact that coaches can grow over the course of time. I've seen a lot of people be a little bit critical of this Clint Kubiak hire because of what happened in 2021 and what the offense looked like and things like that. Let's wait and see how the Kyle Shanahan ness impacts. And we'll believe what we're told at that point. We'll believe what we see at that point, but let's not project negativity out in the streets. There's enough of that going on. Therapy can be different for everybody, right? And obviously, like most of us have much bigger problems than like your favorite sports team and everything. And it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking about trying therapy, uh, give BetterHelp a try today. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Just visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, family, the New Orleans Saints have been digging in on some very interesting connections, and there's a really interesting connection between the incoming Rick Dennison, who we expect to hold some kind of a role like senior offensive assistant or run game coordinator, something like that, as well as, of course, wide receiver coach who they just interviewed, Keith Williams. Let's break all of that down as we continue on today. We appreciate you very much for making us your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, 24-7 national sports YouTube stream. There is one and only that is the first, and that is Locked On Sports Today. Make sure you go and check it out and subscribe on YouTube for the nation's first national sports 24-7 YouTube stream at Locked On Sports Today. All right, so the New Orleans Saints are bringing in, according to reports, Rick Dennison to hold this sort of position to help with the run game. He'll kind of bridge the gap between running backs, offensive line. It's originally being called run game coordinator. Some are saying, though, that the title is still being worked out. Whatever it is, you can expect that his role will be somewhere in the run game, which is very important because the Saints plummeted uh, there and have plummeted consistently over the course of the past few years. So adding more coaching, adding more input, adding more experience to adjusting all that makes a ton of sense. Um, There's a really interesting story, though, when it comes to Rick Dennison. Rick Dennison, when he went to Minnesota for the first time in 2009, I think it was, he took over as the offensive line coach. At the time, The offensive line coaching position was being split between two different coaches. There were co-offensive line uh, coaches at that time. This happened because the original offensive line coach during that time had passed away. And so that happened. And then so they they moved two guys into that position. It was never a you're holding this position forever now kind of a situation, but like they needed to do something to get through that season and all that. So that's kind of how things went down going forward. So when Rick Dennison shows up, as the you know offensive line coach and, and working with the offensive linemen and stuff like that, as well as other responsibilities that he held throughout sort of that period of time, um, he took over as the sole offensive line coach from two co-offensive line coaches. Those two offensive line coaches were Clancy Barone and Andrew Janako, who are now on this staff. Now, I want to be really careful about how I lay this out because Clancy Barone Andrew Janako did not get passed over for that position because they were bad at the position or anything like that. It's just that like, it was a weird or not a weird, sorry, I don't mean to be inappropriate, but like it was a very unique circumstance that led to those two guys having to step into that role. So it's just kind of interesting, the ties between Rick Dennison and two other guys that are going to be on staff. So the ties that the Saints are looking at, and this is what I want to highlight here, aren't just about Clint Kubiak. It's kind of all about everybody, right? Andrew Janako is connected to Clint Kubiak and also is connected to Clancy Barone. Rick Dennison's connected to Andrew Janako and Clancy Barone, as well as Clint Kubiak. Rick Dennison's connected to Gary Kubiak, who's connected to John Benton, who's connected to Clint Kubiak, who's connected to Andrew Janako, so on and so forth. See what I'm getting at here? There's a whole bunch of this sort of like connective tissue that happens between all of them. So it's an interesting way to create maybe the the cohesion that needs to be there for a new system. So it's not about creating cohesion with what's failed. It's about creating cohesion about what you're hoping will succeed. And I think that's a wise and smart choice. Saints have really swung for the fences and have gone all in on allowing Clint Kubiak to come in, revamp this offense, restyle this offense, and have given him a bunch of guys that already speak his language. I think that's a smart choice. Something similar uh, can happen with Keith Williams, who the Saints interviewed as the as, as, you know for the wide receiver coach position, he may not be the only one to interview. We don't think that he, we don't know that he's the one that's getting the job or anything like that. We'll see what happens there. But he doesn't have the connection to uh, much like Derek Foster doesn't have the connection to Clint Kubiak specifically or Gary Kubiak specifically or any of these other coaches. But he's got a really interesting connection to Derek Carr, which is very funny. So the last three years. Keith Williams was the assistant wide receiver coach working with the wide receivers, let's just say it that way. 
with the Baltimore Ravens. And look, when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens offense, that's probably not the story that comes out of Baltimore, right? Like it's always the run game. It's Lamar Jackson. It's the quarterback, all that. But then when they brought in their new offensive coordinator and Todd Munkin, and they started to kind of elevate this passing game a little bit, or at least get the passing game more involved, you could see a little bit of the benefits, the the, the quick you know development of, of young wide receivers, um, you know, the, the uh, Odell Beckham Jr. didn't probably have the impact that we had hoped here in Louisiana that he would have going to a new team, working with Lamar Jackson, all that kind of stuff. Tight ends have been a little bit more of the passing game than anything else. But uh, again, how much of that is the offensive system versus how much of that is actually relevant to immediately the work that Keith Williams is doing, who wasn't the full-time wide receivers coach, right? He was the assistant wide receivers coach during that time. So well, the reason why I highlight that is because I think people can try to like attach the negative to it there as well. But like, let's look at some of the things that he's done. So, um, so with the last three years with the Baltimore Ravens, as we just highlighted, was two lanes wide receiver coach 20, 2012 through 2014. So he's got some um, Louisiana ties, uh, which is helpful. And then before that, he was actually the wide receiver coach from, 20, from 2009 through 2011 with Fresno State. So he was actually the wide receivers coach for the Bulldogs team, the Fresno State Bulldogs team that Derek Carr was a part of and then ended up getting drafted out of that offense. So it is it is an interesting connection that is still there. It's different than the other connections, but there is something to that connection in terms of building that communication between the wide receivers and the um, and the quarterbacks. So let's assume, let's assume that part of the issue early on in this season with wide receivers not running routes fully, not running the right routes, being confused, things like that. Let's assume that some part of that, even though some of it could have had to do with like changing plays, the line of scrimmage and all this other stuff, but let's assume that some part of that, even if a play is being changed at the line of scrimmage, you got to know what that play is. Let's assume that some part of that was the coaching and that's what led to the departure of Cody Burns. Okay. Let's assume that that's the case. If that is indeed the case, then what do you want in your new wide receiver coach? You want somebody that's going to come in and be able to help the wide receivers see the field the same way that the quarterback sees the field. So if you bring somebody in that has a good knowledge of what that quarterback likes to do, you can help to translate that offense from quarterback to wide receivers, from wide receivers to quarterback. This isn't all about just helping Derek Carr's communication become one-sided. It's about getting things back to Derek Carr in a way that is translated in the meanwhile. So if what you're looking for is somebody that can kind of help to bridge that gap between the wide receivers and the quarterbacks uh, extend that connection. Not that that gap is a chasm or anything like that, but if there is any type of lost in translation ness happening, can Keith Williams, if hired, be a guy with intimate knowledge of Derek Carr, with intimate knowledge of the wide receiver position, obviously, be able to help to maybe bridge whatever that gap is or not allow things to get lost in translation and instead help the translation happen. Much like we were discussing Rick Dennison coming in and having sort of this responsibility to the run game, he would kind of be floating in between as a run game coordinator, if that's his title, or if that's his job, sans title, right? doesn't matter. Um, his whole thing is flowing in between running backs and offensive line. So you got a guy in Keith Williams who could potentially help you create that flow between wide receiver to quarterback. Now, I'd still love to see that Brian Hartline news, right? Like Brian Hartline's interviewed for that, the Ohio State offensive coordinator, but we'll see what happens there. Hard to pass up those collegiate things, but hey, Brian, I, like, I don't know if you like recruiting 24-7 NIL transfer portal, and then you got to recruit players that are coming in, but then you got to recruit your own players that you ain't got to do that in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to worry about all that. They're on contract. Come through, come through, come through. All right, coming up next, um, who is the player that suffers the most or could potentially suffer the most? Let's say it that way. Uh, with Clint Kubiak coming in and that new offensive system. Let's break that down as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our very, very good friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing service that I use. Jump on the app on my phone. I'm able to flip through, find the event that I'm looking for, whether local or whether I'm on the road. Doesn't matter if it's sports, if it's a concert, if it's comedy, if it's theater, whatever. Game Time's got it all. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. You should just be able to go and buy 
tickets, whether you're buying them a month in advance, whether you're buying them an hour in advance. Heck, you might be buying them as you walk past the theater and find out that the show is playing game time app. Boom. Oh, look at them ticket prices. Bam. Go ahead and grab them. And you can even see your view from where you would be sitting before you buy. So that there's no surprises. You can take all the guesswork out of uh, buying tickets with game time today. Here's how you do it. Download the game time app. Create an account and use the promo code locked on for $20 off of your very first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. Which New Orleans Saint or New Orleans Saints? might end up being impacted negatively by the upcoming offensive system change with Clint Kubiak taking over as the offensive coordinator. We're here to answer that as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints. Don't forget, we are your team every day. So coming up tomorrow, keep you up to date with everything that you need around the Saints, including more potential coaching hires, how things potentially go through, what's left to be added, and of course, uh, starting to look ahead at the Combine as well. Some of the names of the players that will be participating at the Combine release have, have been invited. I have released. We'll take a look at some of the players that we're going to be watching. So we're going to start all of that early coverage in tomorrow's episode. Um, Today, I want to wrap up by looking at the not so, I was talking about like, you know, not putting negative stuff out there, blah, 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 about these coaches. But we we do have, we do owe it to ourselves to look at both sides of every coin. And and a part of looking at that is not only in like in yesterday's episode where we talked about Alvin Kamara being the one that gets the biggest boost, potentially with Clint Kubiak, with Derek Foster, these guys that have experience in systems that will maximize an Alvin Kamara skill set with players that are Alvin Kamara like Christian McCaffrey, um, Dalvin Cook, uh, Austin Eckler, in terms of being dual threats, right? Like nobody's AK, nobody's Christian McCaffrey, but in terms of being a dual threat, more widely type of utilized type of back, all of that. But who's the player or players that maybe don't see the biggest boost and instead get it bad a little bit? To borrow from the Super Bowl halftime show, um, which, by the way, I didn't enjoy. I didn't like. I enjoyed Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys was was awesome, uh, but didn't like the halftime show. Anyway, um, for me, it's Jamal Williams. Look, I I don't, and I'm not saying that because I don't think that Jamal Williams is a good running back. I think Jamal Williams is a very good running back. This is a guy that just led the NFL two years ago in rushing touchdowns in a system that actually was good at running the football, which the New Orleans Saints just blatantly weren't in 2023. Not reliably enough, not consistently enough, I'll say. Um, I felt like the only thing that really worked for the Saints run game last year on a consistent basis was Taysom Hill. And there were times where the team took that away, right? Like the Saints didn't lean in on Taysom Hill, the run game and things like that. So there were just different things that impacted. We did a whole you know, study last year on this show about getting away from the run game too early and how that impacted New Orleans. That shouldn't be the case in 2024. And look, uh, you know, I, I spoke to some people that are within the Saints organization that are excited about Clint Kubiak becoming the offensive coordinator and discussed a lot about how, like, want to be able to run the ball, uh, want to be able to take advantage of mismatches, want to be able to get the ball out quickly in the passing game. All these things should sound familiar. These are all kind of Peyton esque in a way, uh, just with a, a very different system than what we've seen in the Sean Payton, you know, holdover system over the course of the past couple of years. So, why Jamal Williams? Um, the thing that I think could be of detriment to Jamal Williams' game is the zone run scheme that's going to do a lot of outside this, outside that, uh, th- that type of game. Looking at the running backs that Clint Kubiak has worked with in the past and has found success with, and looking at the Kyle Shanahan system and the running backs that tend to have success in that system, the Jarek McKinnons of the world, the Elijah Mitchells of the world, the Christian McCaffreys of the world, they have a very, very specific type of usage, right? They're these kind of change of pace scat backs that get outside and all this other stuff. Um, And so uh, I think that when you look at Jamal Williams, he's a little bit more of a between the tackles type of runner and all that. He wants to do more on the outside. He's not been asked to do a lot in those types of areas. They brought Jamal Williams here to New Orleans, slimmed him, you know, he slimmed down at what, 215 or something like that. And then they still just ran him up the middle and all these other things. And so uh, the system of what it is that the Saints are wanting to do at on their offense and with their offensive scheme 
is different than how they have previously shown or suggested, because things can change, how they previously suggested that they want to utilize Jamal Williams. So, so it's not that Jamal Williams doesn't have the skills set to be utilized as a zone runner. And even if you're running a lot of zone, we're talking about running a lot of zone, we're talking about running over 50% zone, that 50% could be 52%. It doesn't mean that you're not also running man gap concepts, which Jamal Williams is much better at or is good at and has been asked to do more recently. Let me say it that way. So Jamal Williams might not benefit from this new system, not because Jamal Williams can't be utilized in the system, but because the New Orleans Saints have already kind of shown that that's not how they're interested in using him. Now, maybe that changes with Clint Kubiak being the offensive mind, when the Saints put out the, um, the notice or the, the announcement that Clint Kubiak was announced as the offensive coordinator, there was a quote in there from Dennis Allen saying that basically like he's very excited to see what Clint Kubiak does with the offense, basically. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. But clearly, he's just kind of given the offense to Clint Kubiak, which is the right choice. And so we'll see, right? How, how Pete Carmichael envisioned Jamal Williams might not be the way that Clint Kubiak envisioned Jamal Williams. But just based upon the way that New Orleans has utilized Jamal Williams, what they went to go and get him for last year, all those other things, it maybe doesn't necessarily, um, it maybe doesn't necessarily get you everything that you're looking for, or it doesn't necessarily match up with what they'll be looking for from that Clint Kubiak, Kyle Shanahan slash Gary Kubiak type offense. There's one other player that I'm very interested and intrigued in in terms of like how things pan out for him in the system next year, and it's Trevor Penning. Do things get better because he's notably, right, a better run blocker than he is a pass blocker? Or does his run scheme experience differ from what Clint Kubiak and the Shanahan Ness of the offense is going to look to do? And I think you'll be surprised to know I was. That when I went back and I looked at Trevor Penning's days at the University of Northern Iowa before he became a New Orleans Saint, uh, that 52% of his rush work, and in some cases, individual seasons of over 60% of his run blocking work was done in zone blocking as opposed to man block. So he's actually done quite a bit of zone blocking. So maybe... And I'm including Trevor Penning in this, even though he's, I'm not saying that he's somebody that necessarily like gets the, the downside of the Clint Kubiak experience, the Shanahan experience, all that other stuff. But he's a maybe, and he's a question mark. But I was, I was intrigued, and I was, uh, what's a word I can borrow from Sean Payton, encouraged <laughs> uh, by the fact that Trevor Penning actually has quite a bit of experience blocking in zone run. And maybe that's why even in the run game last year, Things didn't look so great because he was still learning a little bit more of like what the concept was from New Orleans and all that. So I think that the two players that stand out as the ones that have kind of like the the a little bit of a hurdle with Clint Kubiak coming in, whether it's that they have to prove that they can do. And this really is kind of the bottom line. Both these guys would have to prove that they could do something that they otherwise have not been asked to do in this building and on this team before. So if there were two players that fall into that category for me, it's Jamal Williams and Trevor Penning. I think both can be very valuable to this team and both absolutely can make it work in this system. But it's just going to be very interesting to see how the organization feels about that, how the staff feels about that. All right, y'all. I appreciate you. As always, making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day, every day for your second listen. Another big night for Zion Williamson. I mean, my goodness, go and check out Locked on Pelicans. Jake Madison's on fire right now. Caroline Fitton over at Locked on LSU doing a fantastic job as well as they continue to build up all of their future uh, 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 recruiting rankings. I mean, it's awesome. Lots of fun stuff going on here in Locked on Louisiana. Appreciate you as always. Make Locked on Saints a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi, just like Eli and Aaron did. Great to see y'all on the Greenway. Appreciate you hollering at me and saying hi. Look forward to stopping by and for seeing y'all uh, here soon. As always, if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.